Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to another episode of Books and Brews, a series on my channel where I recommend five books that I have recently read while I drink a cup of coffee. And today, I have a straw in my coffee because I've noticed that I always spill it on myself and I feel like this would just prevent that. So ignore my straw, but let's get into this recommendation video because I have five adult fiction novels that I would highly recommend that I think are just pure masterpieces. They're just great reads. I just want to tell you all about them. Actually, I'm getting kind of hot, so I'm gonna take this off because I don't want to sweat for this whole entire video. <laughs> so the first book that I have to talk about is Olga Dies Dreaming. This is a novel that I listened to on audiobook that I just thought was fantastic. It was compelling. It was quick to listen to and really broke me out of my audiobook slump that I was in. And this follows two main characters, Olga and her brother, as they are in their 40s and they are dealing with a lot of different issues all at once. It says that Olga is a wedding planner grappling with her social ambitions, absent mother, and Puerto Rican roots, all in the wake of Hurricane Maria. It also deals with machismo and generational trauma and these two main characters relationship to their absent mother who is a revolutionary in Puerto Rico and she puts the revolution before her own children and they feel very neglected by her but they still feel very haunted by her even though she's still alive. And I just thought it hit on so many different topics in such a well-rounded way. It didn't feel overwhelming, it didn't feel cluttered. It feels like we got to touch upon all these different aspects of what it's like to be a Latin in America and it did it in such a way that was so relatable but also eye-opening because I'm not Puerto Rican, I'm Cuban, so I got to learn a lot about the political landscape of Puerto Rico and the different issues that they're facing because the main character's brother is a politician. So it touches upon that but it also touches upon Olga's dream of being a wedding planner and how that dream is kind of fading away. It deals with her romance. It just touches upon so many different things. It was so good. I really loved the main characters and how they developed as siblings and also as individuals. And I just thought that this was a fantastic book. It's definitely worth the listen or worth the read. And I think that it is a great debut. I feel like me drinking out of a straw is not as aesthetic as me drinking from my mug, but we're trying to save my clothes here. I have too many coffee stains on so many clothes. The next book that I want to discuss is The Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. This is the author of The Silence of the Lambs, which eventually created the movie The Silence of the Lambs, and then The Hannibal Show. So The Hannibal Show is actually based off of The Red Dragon, but The Red Dragon story doesn't really hit the show until season three. But they take the bare bones idea of all these different characters in The Red Dragon and kind of insert them into Hannibal. And I wanted to reread this because I am currently re-watching Hannibal because it somehow became my comfort show and I don't want anyone to psychoanalyze why that is because it's one of the darkest shows I've ever seen and yet somehow I find it to be very comforting to watch. We are not going to look too deep into that but that spurred my inspiration to read the Hannibal series. So I started with the Red Dragon which is the first book in the series. One would think it would start with the book Hannibal but no it starts with the Red Dragon and so many people told me that this is the worst book in the series, it's not worth my time, I should just go to The Silence of the Lambs, but I had a great time with this book. I was annotating it while I was reading it and I was comparing the book to the show and the different uses of dialogue that they put from the book into the show and how they changed around so many different characters. Like Alana Bloom is actually Alan Bloom in the book and Freddie Lowndes is actually a man in the book and they made Freddie Lowndes a woman in the show. So I really liked comparing and contrasting both the show and the book and how many changes they made. And I will admit that season three of Hannibal is my least favorite season of the entire show. I think that season two is superior. So I didn't know if I was going to be interested in the Red Dragon because I was not interested in that character when he was in the show, but I just thought this was such a compelling read. I think if you have watched Hannibal and you're first slightly interested in reading the series, it would be such a fun thing to do. We only really get a taste of Hannibal in this book, but I know he's going to have a larger role in The Silence of the Lambs, which I do plan on reading soon, but I just thought it was fantastic. It was engaging. I thought I wouldn't be smart enough to read this book. I thought that it would be too dry and full of descriptions that wouldn't hold my attention. It was just a book that I dove into and could not stop thinking about and I'm very surprised by that because this book was written in the 80s and I thought that it would feel outdated in a way. And while some of the terms that are used in this book are outdated, obviously, it was still a great read, especially if you are such a big Hannibal fan like me. And if you have not seen the show Hannibal, 
please do. But I am so glad that I started the Hannibal series and I just kind of dove into it without thinking too much about it. And I'm glad that I didn't listen to other people's reviews because I thought this was fantastic. And if this is fantastic, I cannot wait to dive into The Silence of the Lambs. I realized that I was going out of order in terms of the books that I had on this list for this video, but this book is still good nonetheless and I would highly recommend it and it is Rules for Visiting. Rules for Visiting is the perfect book for someone who doesn't want a plot heavy action-packed novel if they just want something that is quiet, calming, and hopeful in a way. Rules for Visiting follows our main character who is a botanist and she receives a lot of time off from her job and she decides to use that time off to visit four friends who she doesn't really speak to and wants to form a deeper connection with them because she realizes that she has a larger connection with plants than actual people and she wants to cultivate those relationships and she wants to strengthen them so she decides to visit all these different friends. So we follow our friend May as she stays with these four friends and she she is learning more about her friends because speaking to your friends through phone or through text is so much different than actually being around these friends and staying in their homes. So she gets a very close look at their lives and how different their lives have become. Some are married, some have kids, some are in rocky relationships, and she is learning more about her friends even though she thought she knew them very well. And it is somewhat slow and quiet and a lot of people might find difficulty diving into this book and holding their attention but I just love slow movie novels. I love a novel that really explores characters motivations, their dreams, their life and I just thought that this was such a fun read because it really got to explore the different facets of friendships and what makes a friendship stronger and I just loved how our main character was looking at all these different friends and she was realizing wow I really want to form a better connection with this friend and wow this friend has changed so much, I realized that our personalities actually clash. I thought it was really good. I think it's underrated because I don't see a lot of people talking about it. And I think it's definitely worth a shot if you love books about friendships, character studies, plant care, and just a slow, melancholic, yet hopeful read. So the next book that I have to recommend was actually chosen to me by an Instagram filter. I have an entire reading vlog all about that which I will link down below. I thought it was a really fun concept and a really fun reading challenge and I would have never known about this book if I had not done that reading challenge. And the book is You Exist Too Much. You Exist Too Much follows a Palestinian American woman who is queer as she is exploring her sexuality while also grappling with the fact that she has a love addiction. So when she gets into a relationship, she sabotages it because she falls in love with someone who is just out of reach, an authority figure, someone who is married, a teacher, etc. And because she becomes obsessed with that person who is just out of reach, it ruins the relationship that she is currently in. So we follow our main character as she goes in and out of relationships, she is exploring her sexuality and she's learning more about herself with each relationship that she gets into, but she's also grappling with the fact that her mother doesn't accept her as a queer woman because she is very conservative, she lives a very different life than the main character. I thought this novel was beautifully written. I highlighted forward and backwards. There were so many beautiful poignant quotes that I just wanted to remember forever, and I thought this was beautifully written, incredibly underrated because I don't see a lot of people discussing this novel. I thought it was fantastic. It is perfect for people who love literary fiction for people who love character driven stories and it was just a phenomenal read. The next novel that I have to recommend is Yerba Buena and I listened to this on audiobook and I just thought it was such a beautiful effortless read in the way that I started this novel on a whim and fell absolutely in love with it. So we follow our main character Sarah who runs away from home at 16 and moves to LA to start a new life and she is dealing with the fact that the past is haunting her. And then we follow Emily who is on her fifth major in college and she really doesn't know what she wants out of life and she's trying to find that niche, that calling that everyone else seems to have and she's still looking for it. So these two main characters walk very different paths in life and we very much follow these two different paths but they flip-flop between each other in terms of point of view and then slowly but surely these two main characters meet, come together, and form a romance. But what I really enjoyed about this novel was the fact that we followed Sarah's story, we followed Emily's story, and their romance didn't overtake the plot of their own lives. The best way I can describe it is that the story 
story feels like a coming of age film but in book form it was just so beautifully written it was just a story that you fell into and you couldn't help but root for both of these characters who go through very tough times in life but it's very hopeful in a way because you see them overcome all those different circumstances and you get to see them come together and it was just such a beautiful literary fiction contemporary story the audiobook was fantastic i could not stop listening to it and i cannot wait to see what else nina lacour is going to write next in terms of the adult fiction genre i think that she is such a phenomenal writer and i cannot wait to see what she's going to write next so those are five adult fiction novels that i have to recommend to you that i recently read and greatly enjoyed let me know if there are any specific book recommendation videos that you would like me to film in the future because i would love to recommend some other books for you as well let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them i would love to form a discussion in the comments if you have made it this far in the video leave a purple heart emoji so we can see who stays for the longest in all my videos and thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me i appreciate it whether you comment, like, share my videos, I appreciate that all so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you very soon. Bye!